Hey there, this is Ryan from Better Tattooing, and today we're going to be talking about why I don't use tight circles when I'm filling something in with a mag. All right. Okay, now that that's over, long time no see. If you're regular to the channel, it's been a little while. Got some other projects going on, but I'm out here doing some voice work and I figured, hey, why not make a couple videos for all y'all? So, this is a question I've actually seen asked uh, a couple times over the past, I don't know, maybe month or two, about people trying to figure out how to fill in a tattoo. And I see almost like universally, everyone says to use tight circles. So let's write it down here. Now let's go over some of the theory that, you know, maybe should apply to what we're doing here uh, and why I don't think it's good. So, when we're filling in a tattoo, as a tattoo artist beginning or otherwise, wherever you're at in your career, the idea of what we're, like wh what is needed, what's requisite, what's, what's necessary is, is saturation, right? So to, to get saturation, we'll air quote around this in a tattoo, we're trying to find the most efficient uh, way to in, in, just inject pigment right which is feels weird doing a video i haven't done one in a little while so gotta be a get accustomed again to talking to myself rock and roll um well while, while you watch and you think that i'm talking to you there's no one here in the garage it's just me and my neighbor's dogs um outside fighting anyways saturation is through mechanical motion we're trying to implant pigment into a specific area right and what we're trying to do is create a situation where the amount of pigment that's in there, so we'll go like pigment load, right, is going to be greater than the time necessary to create trauma, right? So the idea with this is that through as little or few, sorry, they're English people, a few strokes is necessary to actually create the illusion that that space of skin is completely and utterly saturated with pigment. No, it isn't because there's cells there, right? Like skin cells, it just looks like it. So <clears throat> when we're doing this, most people try to break down things into just the easy, simple bites, right? And the tight circles thing is almost like an insulting way of trying to, anyways, I can't say insulting. Cut that out right there. It's, it's a way for people to kind of explain this in the most simplistic manner because they don't actually understand what they're doing with their needles, right? So the, how we break this down is based on types of groupings, okay? Because the groupings are really going to influence how much pigment is going to go into the skin based on how long that the needle is going to be actually interacting with it, right? So if we have liners and we have mags and then we have oversized, Ah, can't spell, can't multitask, nothing's changed. Um, with each one of these, when we're trying to run tight circles, they're going to have a different effect, right? So like with a liner, the idea is that this is called like, you know, a tight grouping or otherwise, however many are going to be in there, blah, blah, blah. The needles are all kind of just clumped together. So visually, when we're looking at it on a macro size, it looks like a very tight, just, you know, clump of metal, right? A little bit of space in between it, which allows the pigment to flow down into the skin. But re realistically, there's a lot of space between those needles, right? So when you're using a liner, there's a lot of space between those needles and they're all about the same height. You don't have beveling like for a rounded shader or something like that, or hollow points where it's, you know, gonna be for some of those trad liners or something like that, where it's just a circular grouping with nothing on the inside. The idea about using this in tight circles is a little bit more plausible in my mind than others, right? It's all gonna come down to like, with any of these, and we might as well preface this as well, right? Tight circles, and it's only if your angle of insertion is correct, right? If you don't have the right angle when your needle is going into the skin, right? As we're gonna be going off the skin, what that value or angle is, off of it, right, instead of being perpendicular or parallel, somewhere in between there, it's going to influence how those needles are interacting with the skin. We've had a video about this before, but we might as well just go over it quick. If we have skin and we have a large grouping, we'll just do the oversized. Oh. <clears throat> 
and the needles are coming in. We'll just do an oversized round here. Depending on the angle that you're coming into the skin, right? And we'll do this two different ways, right? You're going to be <laughs> influencing how the pigment is traveling into the skin and increasing uh, different levels of trauma based on where that needle is, right? If it's a little bit closer, higher up, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, you're going to have a greater amount of skin tension that the machine is actually going to be forced to punch through, which is going to decrease the amount of travel that the pigment's actually going to be able to get into the skin unless you turn the machine way up, which isn't good for its longevity, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, blah, blah, blah. But if you tip your needle back and you start holding a little bit more closely to being parallel with the skin, what happens is you're only using part of the actual needle that's going to be getting to the level that you want. The other side is just going to be breaking the skin open, kind of making it a little bit more raw. It's almost like using two passes, right? So if your needle is going to be in one of these different positions, either up or down or whatever, and you're deciding to make tight circles, you've got to think about how these needles are actually interacting with the skin at that point, right? If you have a steep angle and you're doing tight circles and you have this basically like a just a, a small section of the needle, or maybe even up to 50% of it, right? That isn't going down and traumatizing. It's not going down and implanting the skin. It's just traumatizing the space uh, around where you're going to be tattooing. And we have pros and cons of this, right? Maybe it's breaking up the skin if they have a little bit of dry skin ahead of time, which will increase the flowability of the pigments going into it, you know, which is another story altogether. Um, but it could also just be creating a lot more damage to it, which is something you don't want to see, right? And the same with it's up and down, right? If it's going to require so much more force for that to get in, are you just over taxing your machine? and maybe overtaxing the skin at the same time? Probably, right? So I'm not gonna do tight circles with, with rounds in general because they're not made to be used like a pen. And there's all of these other variances inside of our application where we can try to identify the best case usage with each one of them. But I'd say if it's not 100%, I probably don't want to do it because it's not going to be universal and it shouldn't be universal for each client because everyone's skin is different, right? What are we going to do instead? Let's think about this, right? When it comes down to, we can do this with all of them. Let's just knock it all out. Liners, mags actually have a special thing we need to talk about, but, um, oh, with that one. Um, liners and oversized groupings, rounds or otherwise stacks as well. <clears throat> we can just knock these right out of the park, right? The reason why we don't do tight circles is because it's going to be inconsistent, right? Oh, consistent. Yeah. There we go. Um, what do I mean by that? The vast majority of tattooers out there nowadays lead off the needle. It means where the needle is just, you know, yarded out past the end of the tube so they can see what they're doing. When you're doing something like this, the actual depth of the needle is going to be variable. Right, because when you plant your hand and you're deciding just to use your wrist to run a line or do shading or do something else, there's always going to be spots inside of that arcing motion, right, where you're going to have good saturation, a, and then spots on the outside or in between, where your hand is going to be at a different level in comparison with where it is at the others, right? And then these spots can be considered bad. So those variances that are going into it, especially if you're going to be sitting with your hand palm or whatever position on someone's body and you're running tight circles and you decide to move past that break point where you actually have good control of the needle it's going to create an inconsistent packing of color or black whatever you want to in the frame which isn't good another thing is they're not made that way not made that way it sounds like a 90s r&b song not made that way tattoo needles are not pens they're not markers, they're not pencils, they're not any of that stuff, right? They are needles. <laughs> and you gotta think about the more traditional ways of applying tattooing, right? Tatao, little tap, Polynesian style, Irizumi, right with the hand pokes. In no way are they ever trying to just sit there and do tight circles when they're working with stuff trying to get it in. Why? Because when the needle's going to the skin, right? We aren't gonna do our full skin model this time, but yeah, might as well. When they're going into the skin, <clears throat> and we're deciding to move them back and forth really quickly, you're going to get this thing called wag, needle wag, right? Where the pressure that you're applying on one thing is going to end up pulling the needles back another way. And if you're using a rotary machine especially, that slow hang that you're going to have because of that triangular cam point, which we've gone over in another video as well, is going to create a stall. And when that stall happens, your hand's moving faster than it should, these needles end up moving inside of the skin, increasing the trauma, right? So then you end up getting this weird, like, rotational thing that's going on. It's just a mess, right? They're not made that way. They're made to go in, 
and out. And some people may argue that the machine is moving fast enough that that shouldn't be a bother, but I disagree. I disagree because we did some experiments and it showed us that this is just like not the right way to do stuff. So tight circles, well, let's, let's get to mag specifically, right? I know I had said something about this and I don't wanna have this video going too long, but we might as well get into mags. Mags are really unique, right? Well, it's gonna be circular here. Let's just do our standard woven mag. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine mag right there. And we look at this and it's flat, right? You gotta think about doing, think about drawing a circle with a chisel tipped Sharpie marker, right? Luckily enough, I think I got a couple chisel tips on these ones here, don't I? I do. So when we're thinking about just using like a straight line, line works fine, right? When we're using a flat or a chisel and we start doing tight circles, what you're gonna be getting is these very tight overlapping spaces where you're increasing trauma in the skin specifically. Now, if we take this and we blow it up, right? When you start seeing these spaces overlapping, right? What you're gonna have is that wag that I was just talking about, which is gonna be amplified based on how your hand positioning is, where only a certain amount of ne needles are actually gonna be penetrating the skin, while others are gonna be maybe not reaching the depth that they need to. So you have the wag, non-proper, uh, or improper, that's really bad English again. Improper depth that's going with this and the hand speed that's maybe moving a little bit too fast for the machine, maybe a little bit too small, whatever, slow. Um, what's gonna happen is it just ends up tearing up the skin in these spots, right? Rather than thinking about this as a single grouping where everything is spaced out, realistically what we should be doing is looking at this in three different ways. One, two, these are three liners. And if you look at the orientation of a three liner, Right? You're using three liners back to back to back. So when you go to do a pass over top of something and you have these three spaced liners going over it, that's the three passes on this stuff. That's what we talked about before in another video. The three pass rule is really important. You don't want to do that because you're going to overwork stuff, right? So I don't know if I got to anything. It's been weird. I haven't, I haven't done too many videos recently and I apologize about that if you uh, do like these for information. But this is it. Anyways, this is the breakdown for this stuff, right? That the, the inconsistencies inside of your work are going to become more apparent if you decide to do this and these needles are literally not made this way and if you're using a mag realistically it's just going to increase the amount of trauma that you're imparting on the skin versus putting in stuff the way that you want to so now that we've broken it down and we've said what you can't do how do we fix it simple let me just check my shit here oh yeah we're good we're good. I don't know if I was over time or not. So how do we fix it? Really simple. We got to think about, think about how the needle is made. Let's go just right back to where we started halfway through this. <laughs> I was talking before about the different forms of tattooing and how, how they're putting it into the skin, right? To Tao or Irizumi. The idea is that it's either being pushed or struck into the skin at a very straight angle, right? Where you're worried about that angle of insertion, uh, any type of inflection that's coming off the needles as well. And you're able to control that wag. So more often than not, and I think that this is probably something that's occurred over the past, maybe 10 to 15 years, especially when apprentices were told how to do something, the people that were being you know, the masters or whatever, the teachers of these things, I don't think they really knew a lot of what they were doing. So they started to do this tight circles thing, one, because you could find it in a book that was written in the 70s, which is totally wrong. But two, I don't think that people are really paying attention to what they're doing. I think they're feeling or empathizing what their actual process is, but they're not paying attention to it. And it, if you have been tattooing a while, you probably know like when you get in the zone, it's it's just rote. Your body is reacting to the design that's going on and it's adjusting to the stresses that are there. And if you try to take a step back and think about it, you can lose that focus, right? So even though that may have been said or that was done, how do we do this? Think about how the needle is made, especially with mags, right? Mags, if you have that flat bar thing again, we had talked about, right? Even if it is gonna be three liners next to each other. What we want to do is we want to push this into the skin. Think about like Irizumi, right? We want to push it into the skin. 
at an angle that is defined based on the person's skin condition, age, lifestyle, genetics, and location on the body, right? We push it into the skin. Now this is where the tight circles thing seems to have taken root, right? When we push it into the skin, it has to come back out. So how does our hand motion mimic this? And it's actually not a circle, as a lot of people think. Normally, the best way to do this is called the box method, right? This is, let's do our red marker, we have five minutes left here. That's wrong. The box method is gonna go, if this is you moving forward, right, we'll put an F there, this is your insertion line, right? That's where you're pushing it into the skin. So if you're scraping your stuff forward, pushing it however you're gonna be running your, your machine, that's when you're actually sticking it into the body, right? As the machine's moving up and down, you're gonna be holding your angle, however it is based on your grouping, against it and let the machine do the work. Once you reach the end of your stroke line, your AB, that we've talked about in previous videos as well, what you're going to do at that point is lift. Once you reach your point, you're gonna pick out of the skin. Just rotate your wrist back. Get the, get the needles out of the skin, right? And you're gonna move off. This is going to lead us to the reposition point. Reposition, I don't know if I can spell that right, whatever. Reposition point is when your hand comes back, if you've already filled and saturated that space to the best of your ability, you're gonna end up having to move and adjust kind of like on the fly, right? So this is where we're like moving your arm through a design, right? The last bit is going to be the plant. The plant is where we're gonna stick our hand right before we start that insertion motion again. And it's gonna work in a bit of a square. We're not doing a rounded bits. Everyone's going to think that it's rounded, right? But realistically, what we're doing is almost like a sewing machine is working with that four point process to ensure that we're getting good saturation. So that's it. Tight circles. It can work. It's just inconsistent. Don't do them. If you really want to be a pro and you're using mags, liners, whatever, do our box method. It works way better and it's easier to master, especially at the beginning. Anyways, that's it. I've talked enough today. Hope you all have a great day and we'll talk to you again soon. This is Ryan from Better Tattooing, signing off.